Hey everyone, welcome back to a new series on my channel, Raise That Rating. This is episode two. As you can see from my account, my rating is 187, and we're going to try and raise that all the way up to 2200. We're going to be playing 10 minute chess games. And let's get into a new game. My opponent is rated 149. We're going to start with the simple basics of chess. We're not going to get into anything super complicated. We're going to try and control the center and take advantage of my opponent's mistakes. At this level, that is what you are going to try and do. So we're going to play simple chess. I'm going to try and get in my head, um, in, in the mind of a 200 rated player. But essentially, you just want to develop your pieces. You don't want to do anything crazy. And simply taking advantage of your opponent's mistakes is going to be the way you win. How are we going to take advantage of this last move here? Well, our, my opponent just played f4. It's a move that weakens a critical square in the middle of the board, this e4 square. And we're going to use that square to our advantage. We're going to plop our knight into the e4 square. This knight is a monster piece now. Let's see how my opponent handles this. This knight is on what we call an outpost, a square that cannot be attacked by pawns. Notice these pawns have pushed up, making that square weak and vulnerable. I'm also aiming his bishop. I might capture it, I might not, kind of depending on what happens. Okay, he doesn't allow me the option. And now I'm going to try and control the center with a move like c5. This puts pressure on his pawn and also opens my queen up. And... I'm trying to control the center by also maneuvering my knight behind this pawn, which is also very, very good. My opponent brings his queen out. I think I'm just going to go ahead and capture his pawn in the middle of the board. The whole concept behind this is that if he were to capture, I can develop with a gain of an attack, which is a, called a tempo in chess. This is a very, very good idea to do oftentimes because you get your pieces out for free. So notice my knight attacks that queen. And everything in the center is defended. The pawn defends the knight. The pawn on d5 is defended by the queen, which is really important. My opponent missed that. And again, at this level, your opponent's going to miss a lot of stuff. And that's the kind of the cool part about this, um, about this level is that you can just beat your opponent by playing simple, strong moves. Okay, our opponent um, gives us a pawn. We're going to go ahead and capture the pawn. And we're eventually going to try and start aiming at his king. Okay. I have a simple strategy. When you're up material, guys, don't make the game complicated. Trade the pieces off the board. And we're going to keep go ahead and just capturing stuff off the board here. We're not going to make this complicated. It's my simple advice. Trade pieces when you're up. Okay. We're going to go for an attack now on the king. Bishop to f5. We could capture the bishop too. Obviously, this would be very, very good. But this is not, this game is not going to last much longer. We are putting the king in the, in the face checkmate. Notice the bishop slices him off, kind of keeping, pushing the king over to the side of the board. And now you should be able to see the checkmate. Same idea, queen to b4. This is a 13 move game, guys. But that's how quickly you can raise ranking at this level if you just take advantage of your opponent's mistakes. Okay. We're not even going to go over to that one, guys. I feel like that was pretty um, normal. Let's go ahead and get another 10-minute game here. We're playing um, a 22, a, uh, 228 from the United States. Bravito Rito. So, okay, let's continue to play that same style, simple style of chess. We're going to just develop the pieces and... We're going to develop my bishop. I like doing this. I did this in the previous episode, developing the bishop and then pushing the pawn up the board to get the rest of the pieces out. My opponent pushes a pawn in the middle of the board, but this pawn is capturable for free. That knight does attack it, but I would have a guy protecting that pawn. It's very important to account attackers and defenders in chess. And if you're able to do this, you're usually going to be playing pretty well. Okay, he moves his knight to the side of the board, attacking my bishop. Um, a sneaky idea. I'm just going to go ahead and back it up. Playing a simple move. I just want to play bishop. Uh, I just want to play pawn e6, and I want to develop the rest of my pieces. I don't want to play anything super complicated here. I could have maybe played bishop g4 or even some other stuff, but 
we're just going to play really simple chess. Okay, let's go ahead and play e6, develop my bishop. I could capture, but I want to let him capture me if possible. A lot of players at this level, or even at below 1,000, they, they see a capture, they do the capture. And sometimes that's not the best strategy. Sometimes it's simple just to develop the pieces and win the game. So, all right, my opponent uh, is trying to take my pawn. I'm just going to go ahead and capture. He captures back with a pawn. Probably would have been better to recapture with the knight there. That pawn is now weak, and his king would be open if he ever castles on this side of the board. Okay, I'm just going to develop my bishop to b4, playing an aggressive move, pinning this knight to the king. We'll see what my opponent, do, my, my opponent does. He goes a3, but he forgets about this tactical idea, guys. Remember this one. It's called removing the defender. The knight is defending this bishop currently. By taking the knight, we remove the defender and attack the king, and then we can simply capture the bishop on b5. And by doing that, we win a piece, and this bishop is an absolute monster in this diagonal, slicing the king off. He moves and attacks my bishop, and we probably just want to retreat I think we're going to put this bishop on the a6 square. I actually like the bishop here, being able to cut that king off and really put that uh, put pressure on that king. And, you know, if we were put the bishop on c6, we would have blocked our knight. We want to be able to develop all our pieces nice and easily here. Okay. Let's go ahead and bring my queen into the attack here, controlling the middle of the board, sneakily attacking the rook in the corner, and getting ready to maybe start also attacking the king from this e4 square as well. All right. We could check immediately and attack the king. We could also just try and develop my pieces here, which maybe is the most simple position. I understand he can capture this pawn, but I'm not afraid. Most of the time in the opening, the goal is to get your fair share um, of the center of the board. You want to get your pieces out and you want to make sure that you don't, you are safe with your pieces. You don't give them away for free in this position. The queen on e2, not a safe piece. We can capture it and we have a huge advantage now. We're just going to, again, round up everything. My opponent resigns. We raised our rating again, 37 points to 261, guys. We are making some awesome progress in this episode. I think my opponent kind of started to go wrong when you know, he started moving his pieces to the side of the board after a move like knight to h4 and other moves such as like this. And when he played this f3 move, he needed to capture back with the knight to get this knight back off the side of the board and maybe castle. He would have had some potential ideas, but nothing really worked out for him and then lost the queen. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Um, comment below what you would like to see. And I will see you on the next one.